Scikit-learn is a Python library that helps you train machine learning algorithms fast. It's an industry standard and super easy to use. Let's go over what it can do, the two most important things that I think you should know about it, useful resources on their website, and finally, let's tie it all together with a coding example. Let's go. I like to think about there being four different areas where Scikit-learn can help you in your machine learning projects. The first area is simply helping you create a training set and a test set. The second is data pre-processing, such as scaling your features or creating different labels for your categorical features. The next is training and evaluating your machine learning algorithms. And finally, creating automated pipelines to tie some of these steps together. So you can see that this is in the middle of a typical ML workflow. Okay, now let's talk about the two most important things that I think you should know about Scikit-learn. The first one is that it supports a ton of different machine learning algorithms. Just take a look at their website. Here in their user guide, you can see all the different algorithms it supports linear regression or ordinarily squares, logistic regression, support vector machines, k-nearest neighbors, naive Bayes, decision trees, it supports all the fundamental algorithms. Speaking of fundamental algorithms, if you'd like to learn more about these algorithms and see their implementations in scikit-learn code, then head over to my website and download a free PDF where I explain all of this. I even go into some of the math behind the algorithms. And now the second thing that I think you should know is that in my opinion, there are three core functions to scikit-learn. That is the train test split function, the fit function, and the predict function. Train test split helps you create your training data and test data, like I mentioned before. Fit is what you call to actually train your algorithm. And then predict is what you use to make predictions with your algorithm. So those are the three main things you need to do in every machine learning project. I actually made a whole video on this, which you can check out in the description below. So before we get into the coding example, let's quickly check out their website. Some people aren't aware of all the useful resources that they have on there. So this is the homepage, scikit-learn.org. Now let's go to install. You can see here our instructions to set up scikit-learn on your own computer. It's pretty easy just got a pip install. Next, let's look at the user guide. This is what we were looking at earlier to see all the algorithms, but they also show all the other functions that scikit-learn implements in their library. So this is really useful to go through to learn more about it. And now this is the last page that I wanted to show you. This is a glossary of really common terms in machine learning. I found this to be useful when I was first starting and didn't know what a lot of terms were. But honestly, now when I'm not sure of a term, I usually go straight to ChatGPT. Now let's go through a really simple code example that exclusively uses scikit-learn. Let's quickly go over the different steps that we're going to do. First, we're going to get a data set. Then we're going to create a training data set and the testing data set. We're going to do some pre-processing of our data. We're going to do basic machine learning training and evaluation. And then we're going to put the pre-processing and training into a pipeline. And then I'm going to show you how you can use grid search and cross validation to help train your machine learning algorithms. OK, back to the top. So Scikit-Learn actually has a lot of toy data sets on their website that you can use to get started quickly. Here, I'm importing the Iris data set. So let's take a look. You can see I've loaded the data set and printed out the keys because this returns a dictionary. In here, the important keys to know are data, target, target names, and feature names. So let's print some of those out here. So here are the different features we're working with. Sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. And the labels that we're trying to predict are Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. So if you don't know, these are three different types of flowers. And then about each flower, we're getting these four pieces of information. And we're going to use these four pieces of information to predict which flower it is. So zero corresponds to Setosa, one is Versicolor, and two is Virginica. Now here, people typically store the features into a variable X and the labels are the target, what we're trying to predict into the variable Y. So let's do that. Now that we've got our data, let's split it into a training and test set. So this is really simple. We're just gonna import the train test split function from scikit-learn and pass our data into it. Let's run that. So here, what this does is it takes the first data set, so these are all our features, and it splits them into these two variables. And then it takes the Y 
data, which is our labels, our targets, and splits them into these two variables. We're going to use the training data to train our algorithm, and then we'll use the test data to evaluate the algorithm. Let's take a look at some example data here. So you can see that these values correspond with this label, which we know is Virginica. And these features from our test set correspond with this label, which we know is VersiColor. Now let's move on to pre-processing. So for our pre-processing, we're going to scale our features using the standard scaler. And what this does is it subtracts the mean to shift all of the data to be centered around zero and then scales it down by dividing by the standard deviation. So in order to do that, we're going to import the standard scaler. We're going to create an instance of the standard scaler. We're going to call the fit function on our training data, and then we're going to call transform. So the fit function is basically where it calculates the mean and standard deviation on the training data, because that's what we're passing in. And then the transform function is when it actually does the scaling. So let's run that. Alternatively, you could call the fit transform function, which does both of these steps all at once. We can run that just for fun. And now let's give you an example of what happened. So you can see here, I'm printing out the raw data or the non-scaled data, and it's between 4.3 and 7.7. .7. And here I'm printing out the scaled data, and it's between about negative two and two. So you can see it's centered around zero, and scaled down. Doing this type of scaling can help our machine learning algorithms learn during gradient descent. It's especially useful for algorithms that use distance in order to create their predictions and classifications. Now let's actually train an algorithm. We're going to train a k-nearest neighbors classifier. So you can see I import that here. I create an instance of it. And then I pass in our scaled data and the training labels into the fit function. Like I mentioned earlier, this is one of the important functions where our algorithm actually learns from the data. So let's run that. Done. Now we have a trained k-nearest neighbors classifier. So let's use it to make some predictions. First, we need to make sure we scale the test data. k-nearest neighbors was trained on scaled training data. So you need to make sure the test data has the same transformations. And then after scaling the test data, we'll pass it into the predict function to get some predictions. And now let's use scikit-learn to get an accuracy. We'll do that by comparing the predictions we just got to the correct values from the test data. And then this will divide by the total number of labels to give us an accuracy. 1.0 or 100%. That means it got everything right. All right, so you just saw how we did pre-processing of our data by scaling it with a standard scaler. And then we trained our k-nearest neighbors classifier. Let's put both of those steps together in a machine learning pipeline. Let's open this up and go here. So you can see the first thing we do is import the pipeline. And then in the pipeline, we pass in the standard scaler and our classifier. Right now, we only have one transformation to the data, and that's the standard scalar, but you could have more here, but we'll only do one. And then at the end of your pipeline of transformations, you can optionally put an algorithm to train with, but you don't have to do this. Your pipeline could just do a series of transformations. So after we create our pipeline, we're going to call fit on it, which is going to apply the transformations to the training features and then pass both the features and the labels into our classifier and call fit on the classifier to train it. And then after that, we'll call score on the pipeline, which is going to do the default score of this algorithm that we passed in, which is accuracy. Let's run it. Done. You can see we automated all the steps and then got the same accuracy of 100%. And now the last thing I want to show you are two slightly more advanced topics grid search and cross-validation. Let's take a look. So to understand grid search, let's first look at this. You know what, actually, let me call this hyperparameters. So here I've defined two hyperparameters for k nearest neighbors, the number of neighbors to look for and the distance metric that it's going to use. So what grid search does is it creates combinations of features and creates a model for each one and then it will return the model that performed the best at the end. 
So for example, it'll create a model with three in Euclidean, three in Manhattan, five in Euclidean, five in Manhattan, seven Euclidean, seven in Manhattan. It'll make a model for every single one of those, evaluate them, and then return the best one. That's it for grid search, not too complicated. Cross-validation is a little bit more complicated and it's tough to explain verbally. But basically, cross-validation takes the training data that you gave it and creates a bunch of mini training sets and test sets out of the bigger training set that you gave it and evaluates the algorithm on a, all the different mini ones in order to give you a better evaluation about how the models are performing. It's okay if that didn't make complete sense right now. I encourage you to go learn more about it or leave a comment below and I'll make a video about it. So right here, we're defining grid search with cross validation. We pass in the pipeline that we defined here, the parameters, cross validation of five, which means it's gonna create five of those mini test sets and training sets. And we're going to use accuracy to evaluate our model. Then we're going to fit to apply everything, print out the best estimator, the best parameters, the best score then we're going to use the best estimator to make our predictions on the test data and finally print out the accuracy let's see what that looks like okay so here is our best model you can see that the best model used the manhattan distance and five nearest neighbors on the training data it had a score of 93 percent accuracy and on the test data, it had 100% accuracy. To see a beginner project using Scikit-Learn, feel free to check out my heart disease predictor project on the screen. I'll see you in the next video.